generative artificial intelligence and how it is and how it is being uh, uh, used and in whatever fields and whatever domains it has been uh, used all such things i'll be discussing with some uh, deep insights of how it is related uh, used in speech uh, processing so coming to this genre artificial we will just i'll just give some introduction about artificial intelligence we know this artificial intelligence is playing a major role in nowadays in the technology so inside the artificial intelligence we have machine learning deep learning and all those things uh, so uh, making everything aut uh, automated by with the predictions everything is uh, in these real time life is going with all the predictions and how those prediction is going to happen with this generative artificial intelligence we'll just see it so first is we know artificial intelligence just uh, we are going to predict something so but this generative ai yes, is something different about apart from that predictions what this generative artificial intelligence will do is it will generate as the word itself says generate so it is going to generate some output it is going to give some output we can say that it is predicting something that is also an output but i i am also telling that it is not going to make any predictions apart from that it is going to do something right so it is going to give some output but it's not as, as same as like predictions so what is that then that output is it is like a data okay so a data is going to be produced so how this data is going to produced so we are having some set of datas right so you are going to predict something you are going to uh, output something so artificial intelligence is going to predict some output based on the previous data so what uh, we need some previous data and in suppose some in most of the cases we are not we are not more than enough uh, having the uh, i mean uh, data is okay not enough data to train your model and to make an accurate predictions only to uh, until now you can day by day every, each and every algorithms has been introduced to in order to improve the performances in order to improve the uh, accuracy all those things so to increase accuracy and to increase the performance and the predictions levels to be high you need more amount of data when you increase your data so your your predictions will so the machine with the model will get trained so trained based on the training and it uh, it will give a increased performance all the such cases so this generative ai is going to output your data which means you it will create some new content okay it is going to create some new data it is going to create some new data and add to your data i mean a data set that is for, for that purpose we go for this generative ai systems so what is the data either it is an information which means a text data not only a text data it is also an image data it is text data it is audio data depends do depends upon your data set it, your, it is going to create some contents okay so uh, as i am telling that it is going to create some data new data new database the model itself is going to create some data set no data is nothing it is not only the text it includes images audio and everything so this is how generative ai hi which is different from a normal ai normal ai is going to predict something based on the data what you create this generative ai is introduced to create new data itself okay that data will also be created with the help of the model okay whatever model we are created so coming to some of the key terms which which we have to know uh, in this uh, generative uh, ai or ai systems is i'll discuss in the above our uh, slides so first as i said this generative model will uh, model will learn and generate new data samples okay so the, it will create some new data samples and it will get added to the data existing data sets so how it creates that new data set by learning the patterns and structures of the data it leads it learns the features and it uh, produces the new set of samples okay based on the so what uh, based on the same distribution how the uh, other data set is if i have some set of data set, set like from uh, i have some hundreds of data set 
but it is not more than enough to train my uh, i mean model so i want some more data set so i want to create some samples i cannot take from anywhere or i cannot uh, fake it so i want the model itself to uh, i mean i want the model itself to generate the new data based uh, based on the same patterns and structures with the same set of distribution for that i'll be uh, going for the generative model so generative model is something different and now you need some discriminative model also as well so what this discriminative model will do this discriminative model will focuses on modeling the uh, i mean the modeling the uh, i mean the uh, a, the the structure of how a model should uh, trained to develop those uh, examples so it is like it is not the generative model it is something opposite to the generative model so it will not create any sample uh, uh, rather it will create some different boundaries and different classes uh, so that you can categorize your data so you are creating some new data right so that has to be categorized in different classes or uh, in different surfaces where you want so you have to fix some boundaries and fix some condition for that you want some discriminative model so this discriminative model will either classify or it will label your data okay so labeling is nothing but you are naming your particular data so i am generating okay so i i have a set of for example i'm taking a data set with the fruits if i take a fruits data set it is not like every time you will have a apple data set it is not that every all the fruits are apple or mango so it is a combination of apple mango banana orange all those things right so when i create with the help of that uh, uh, previous data only this generative model is going to predict uh, uh, generate some new data samples so similarly this discriminative model also is going to create some model which will label or classify this is whatever the new data arise this comes inside apple this comes inside orange so similarly i have to label also some cases depends upon the uh, situation and the problem statement you 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 will be changing your uh, matrix either classification or labeling so based on that the label is nothing but i am labeling after generate after the new sample generated by the generative model this discriminative model either classify or it will label with the names so this is how these two will work and next is a uh, generative adversarial network so this generative adversarial network is a combine is a kind of algorithm so it is going to work with the help of this uh, ai con uh, i mean generative ai concept so how this it's a kind of neural network right so this generative model has two neural networks one is generator and the discriminator so what it, these two will do this generator will create some new, new new samples while the discriminator will distinguish whether it is a real sample or generated sample we should know whether if i if if i am giving some input to the system the system should understand or uh, should learn that it is a, it is original data it is a data which is all directly collected from that place or it is generated by the model Th those things will be identified by with the help of this gan network so it these if this gaa gan network will be worked when you combine both generator and the discriminator only so that it will give some quality or quality a uh, generated samples okay the quality of the uh, samples will be increased so next is coming to latent space why we want this latent space why 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 i am talking about this latent space latent space is like uh, uh the where we use this latent space spaces if i have some less number of features for a particular data set okay the most common data set which everyone knows is iris data set where only four features will be there in the uh, data set so that that comes under the latent space so I, what is latent space is it is a lower dimension representation learned by the generator model which means i am going to generate some new samples so that new samples is, will be generated by learning the 
previous features right so for learning that previous features you need some more features uh, you should now now coming to this latent space and all it will have only lower dimension so the lesser number of features so that has to also to be handled and that has also to be increased with the help of this generator uh, ai next is so next is one i have talked about this general uh, general adversarial network and the next is variation auto encoders all everyone knows what is auto encoder with the help of uh, encoder and decoder concept will be attaining this auto encoding part, uh, part so variation auto encoders which will map the input data okay it will also have the same encoder and decode so this encoder network what it will map is it will go and map the data which is with the latent space okay so it will map the uh, input data to the latent space to the lower dimensionality whatever the data you have you will go and map it to the uh, lower dimensionality representation and based on the uh, these encoding part will do with the lower dimension so next in the decoding part only you will be generating the new output points in the latent space so you will be like including that old data to the new data with uh, well in the encoding part this encoding part will lead, uh, will read all these uh, features and everything uh, and it will be sent to the decoder and that will generate the new set of output points in the latent space so which will also increase okay where you will just link uh, trained is this variation auto encoders will be trained with the maximum likelihood by using so maximum likelihood and uh, taking the maximum likelihood and uh, training them only with will, will be with the help of the original data so that the generated new okay, samples will be learned distribution okay will have a uh, normal distribution which means a learn the distribution is, is nothing but all the, uh, the data all the representations everything will be learned by your model so that you can give get some accuracy the, to, these things are like why we are training these more um, with more number of data and everything is like to get a uh, uh, to get a improved performance and to get a good accuracy so that it, this 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 automation is having some uh, re, uh, i mean some usefulness right so next is auto regressive auto regressive is like uh, this is only for generating a sequence of text this auto regressive model will just go for this text like uh, for example this next word prediction is a common thing which we know all those things right so that only we have some set of words based on the some set of words it could be uh, another set of words because we have some if i take some here we have different types of here if we uh, have some r then is uh, was all these things are there you know it will learn will make uh, the system to learn the uh, data text with the help of this auto regressive model so for the text only particular only for the uh, text it is going to handle means you can go for this auto regressive model so those who are working in the nlp and those who are going for text processing all all people can go for auto regressive model to increase the samples so that they, they will generate the text sequence of text where the model can predict the next word based on the previous word in sequence so this is how this auto regressive model choose so we have a uh, Uh, we have seen this uh, next word prediction concept in many real time places like uh, if you write your uh, um, email also you will get some predictions right the, in, nowadays in whatsapp also we are getting that if we type good it is it is automatically showing the next word as good morning if when i when i go and type em then it is coming like mo uh, good m and then coming morning then if i type good and e it is coming as good evening so nowadays in in all the applications in every application wherever you are we are more you, you, where the usage of the uh, text is more there and all this next word prediction has arrived so next coming to this deep fake deep fake is nothing but we are uh, we are generating so we are generating our model so we have to also classify and we should know which is the original data so it should, it should not be uh, same it is not same right so why here is 
though you just create new data by training your older features and all um the, the, there is there will be difference when you train with the original data and then there is will be a difference when you train your model with your generated uh, samples so for that to make it a classification you need some real data and fake data that has to be classified right so for that purpose this deep fake technology as i right so this will will um, uh, i mean identify the highly realistic fake content okay so that you cannot uh, always it cannot be misused right so some some places what they use any how it is generating something so why i want to go and search for uh, all the original data also most probably when you go for this uh, uh, medical images and all it is not that much easy to collect the medical images but instead some of the images are available in uh, i mean in your uh, online free or uh, through kegel or through jitap and all those uh, places you are uh, 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 provided with these uh, medical images so, so people can uh, utilize that and they can increase your data uh, increase the data set uh, with this generative model and they can i mean they can provide that this is our own data set which has been created by ourselves which has been created by us so the, those things cannot uh, should not be misused right in for that cases to evaluate your data set if you have a deep fake methodology they can easily identify your uh, real uh, real data and fake data so next coming to this conditional generation conditional generation is also in, uh, going to create some new samples with the help of the conditions okay not with the help of uh, i mean uh, uh, not by reading the features alone so before whatever i was talking is is generally it will create some uh which means it will it is going to create some samples right so based on reading the all the features i am not just giving some particular thing you should learn only four things you should learn only uh, three features and you should learn only from uh, horizontally you have to learn only five data so all these conditions i am not giving in some cases if i want only with that cut type of conditions then i can go i need some that kind of model also no for that Mod, uh, kind of model i will go for this conditional generation so based on some conditions if you are going to generate the new samples then you can go for conditional generation if you don't want any condition if you want a, a simple uh, a new samples whatever uh, it is collected before then you can go for another a uh, different types of variation auto encoders or simply generator model all these things you can go so inference is nothing but a, gener a general okay this is a general uh, model to create your new sample with the help of this generative uh, concept so this is a this is the structure of generational adverse generative adversarial network architecture so initially i am having so initially i am having some random vector which means a random input so i want that input to be uh, uh, i want that input to be passed to the generative model and i want some uh, new data okay so what it will do is see i have random vector so this random vector is been passed to this generative model so this generative model is giving some generated fake example which you are going to which is a new example so next i am going to give this to discriminative model so this discriminative model will have the real example and the generated fake example based on that it is going to i mean uh, it is going to do some binary classification but i if one input is going to come back, come then that will just do i i told no so this gen discriminative model will not uh, i mean it, it will not create any uh, samples instead it will classify instead it will classify or label now what is it is doing is it is doing some binary classification which means either whatever data is coming through the discriminative model it has to classify whether it is a original data or a generative 
data so this whole example you can just uh, go and check for this either it is uh, real data or identification of fake data that has been done so once it is classified that will be updated to generate a model uh, and the descriptive net model as well okay so this is how the generative adversarial network so the main concept uh, two places is generative so if this architecture wants to run you not only need the generative model you also need the discriminative model also so for that i am just giving some input and generative model it will generate it will learn all the features it will send to the, it, these generated fake examples will be generated and that will not directly go to the binary classification instead it will go to the discriminative model the discriminative model is always is also provided with the real examples also and then some the binary classification then you are just creating either it is a real or fake now we have some set of how this generative ai works we have some five steps as always every model follows is we have some data collection and pre processing so you have to collect your data so not without any data this generative ai is not, uh, don't misunderstand that it will gen generate data I means it will not directly generate data only if you have some basic data set it will generate the data so you have to collect some data set without data set you cannot do generative ai so that content should be can be an image text audio and any other form of data which i already mentioned in your pre in the previous slide so Uh, the pre-processing will also should happen, uh, 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 which means uh, if I take some images, so the unwanted noise will get uh, uh, reduced. If the text is there, then unwanted symbols will be reduced. If audio is, uh, if audio is there, the silence. Okay, we have so, if, while recording the audios, you know, some people will have some, will take some pause, so there will be a silence in their. Uh, i mean uh, in the recording so those silence they will be removing and they and they will do some sampling rate reduction also so those things will be handled in audio text and also unwanted symbols will be there that will take some place so and uh, because uh, you know in some places one question uh, one uh, one word will ha act as a question some uh, in some places one word will act, act as an answer so uh, so these things are there no so but i don't want in such cases so for that they will probably avoid some i mean some uh, symbols and images this unwanted noise and sizing size of the images resizing it and everything uh, or if you want to do some segmentation all these process will be handled in the uh, this uh, uh, it will be done, handled and done in the pre processing step so yeah first step is going to be the data collection and the pre processing next is you are going to train your model so we are going to train your model the training will take place only with the data set which is which has done is pre processing so the pre processed data will be given to the generative model for training okay now the choice of model okay now you have to select some model right I, i've discussed already so generate word versal network variation auto encoder auto auto regressive models all those things so now i want to identify the type of data and the desired output also so if before picking into the uh, gen model generate training i want to understand the different types of models so that's why i've just given in, uh, uh, in short short introduction about each and every uh, model uh, in in the pre previous slide itself now i just want to have and uh, the i want some prediction of text i am giving some image and i want the what is that image so it is going to handle both text and image so if i go only if i go for auto regressive model i want only text so now uh, so that i can go for uh, this generative uh, uh, sorry auto regressive model we know that auto regressive model will uh, handle some text it will take, generate the text uh, in sequence so if if suppose i am going for this problem statement if i go for auto regressive model is it it is possible but it is not possible as 
as well why because i am giving some in my input as image okay it has to handle the image as well right so then i want to choose a common model which either it can be generator adversarial model or variational auto encoders okay so that i can go for that if if suppose i just want to uh, and i i give another real time example so we know nowadays one of the recent uh, i mean uh, now uh, in text processing some problem statements are are arriving what is it is uh, the identification of depression so identification of depression uh, in social media so nowadays everybody we are sharing in status putting some post in the twitter whatsapp and all other facebook and all other uh, social medias right now people started to uh, identifying the uh, depression state of that particular uh, of each and every individual by their the status itself now for that particular for identification of the depression with the help of the status is only is going to happen with the help of the uh, text so they'll take what post they are putting what is the words they are pa passing it so now i am going to handle a full, a full everything in the text so i am going to take the message what they have posted and i am going to tell, tell they are in this in what level of depression so both is text okay right my input also is text my output is also text now i can go for this auto regressive model okay similarly you you will have some for to handle only the images you can go for generative adversarial network variation auto encoders or if you want to go if i want to handle my speech recognition also i can go for this variation auto encoder so always you have to pick the model so to pick the model you have to be uh, very much clear about what type of data you want you uh, have which means you should be very clear of what input you are going to give and what output you are going to get so only then you can select an appropriate uh, generative models for your system so during training the model learns okay how the model will get learns about the patterns and structures of the data what you are providing and it will create some uh, i mean some distribution uh, about the data and it will generate right so all these training samples will be given to the model to get for training purpose next is latent space representation so this generation learns the latent space representation which is a lower dimensional representation which means a less number of uh, features that cap uh, Uh, so it will capture that it, so this lower dimensional means less number of uh, features will be captured and the variations of the data will be analyzed and it will be easily manipulated as it has some less number of features the manipulation is very easy and the generation of new samples also is easy, easy but when uh, when going for the uh, how uh, how good it is how good that particular data is like something uh, less will be less because we have some less number of features right so but it is it will create some uh, i mean the creation will be easy so you have only less the timing and the learning process will be less as we have less number of features that which means the pattern learning or the structure learning will be reduced so it is easy to manipulation and the generation of new samples next coming to the generative process generation process so now my model is uh, i've just uh, collected data i pre process i pre process and send to my data i just given i selected my model i given some model training to the model and i create some uh, uh, represent i just uh, i'm done with the manipulation of the uh, features and now i want the generation process now in this process in this generation process my model will be trained now i will get it get be i will get the new content with some sampling so what now i have some uh, <clears throat> so in the gn we have two places here one one is with the help of gan so the generator network generates a new sample how this will be generated based on the random noise and 
with this pumps uh, sometimes you can give some with uh, specific inputs as you have uh, you can don't want to read the entire image only with this portion you can read and you can generate the uh, the boundaries can be similar if i want to detect some hole in uh, for uh, for medical image if i'm taking if i want or else everybody is very uh, very much aware of that leaf detection i want my leaf that uh, some diseases will be in the stem alone or in the center of the place alone so i want to dis uh, display one and uh, i want to identify that only for identification that i want more samples for that i am creating samples so uh, my data my generation of new samples on, can only concentrate on the whole not the entire leaf so that i can fix some condition to select only in that particular boundary the rest of the things can be as simple as same for the other new generated part also only the particular boundary what i have fixed only can be changed and uh, new samples can be generated in those cases you can go for this gan and coming to this uh, variation auto encoder also the the sampling points can be increased increased for this uh, encoding and decoding part so next coming to this evolution and refinement this evolution and refinement is based on uh, how the various uh, depends upon okay one will measure how efficiently it is working one will go with accuracy only one will find with the fn score so this uh, this evaluation is depends upon the uh, the the i mean the person who is going to uh, i mean calculate or model some some will like uh, some will use some pre trained models and they'll give some their own data set and they'll give measure the output so how efficiently our data set is working for this particular model how efficiently it is working for their own data set and their own model so for likewise you have to measure it so all these measurements and evaluation will be Uh, come coming in the last step and the refinement is nothing but the fine tuning process i told some pre trained model if i'm going to use if it is not always that i should use only pre trained model not like that right i can just change the pre trained model by training with my own data set and that that particular tab uh, part is called as fine tuning i mean training your uh, i mean you're training your the model with your own data set with where the model is already available but i'm trained i'm just giving my own data set and training the system so that it will be fine tuned okay so once it is fine tuned it, it can give a better result than uh, you are using with a pre trained model so to improve the quality also okay so next is coming to this uh, next time just going to talk like where 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 it is used and what are the applications has been evolved in these different uh, 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 domains okay so the major domains what people are working is text generation image processing speech and some augmentation processes so also i have some text generation first so based on the you are going to generate new text based on the patterns from the existing test data for that to for the text i told already it is auto regressive models will be used and apart from that you have rnn recurrent neural network and nowadays they have used some bert transformer models also bert uh, bert model has arrived as a transformer model so with the help of the transformer model also you can go for that so this text generation has been uh, the uh, i mean the top top thing which has been going over in recent days like once the chat gpt bot everything came right so it is that whatever we ask it is generating some text so my input is text my output is text so it is full of text so chat box chat gpt you are very familiar uh, we, everybody would have heard about this chat gpt which is giving a different Different, different output for a single question. So all these things, uh, the, these has been the um, uh, auto generator with the help of this auto generator AI only. It is also working in the artificial intelligence. Next, coming to this image generation. Image generation is also like. <clears throat> some re you have some examples. Okay, real world examples in your uh, day to day life. so from that if you want to create some new images with the help of auto variation auto encoders with the help of gan you can just it is possible so 
for this image generation also this data argumentation is pro, pro, uh, is possible so what is that the data argumentation i'll let you know in the uh, forthcoming slides so this with the help of this data argumentation if you use data argumentation the it, the, it is proved that the performance of the machine learning model is also increasing as well so the images has been increased so that the accuracy is also increased so the applications here are the dal e uh, which means uh, for realistic images uh, to get the realistic images of the uh, different uh, different uh, things and mid journey these two platforms are the very interesting and uh, popular uh, uh, i mean platforms to provide you with the realistic images for image generation techniques you can go check with that and coming uh, coming to this video and speech generation so video and speech generation is um, so what we we'll use so i have it is video means do we are going to handle is it is as a video no not like that at all so with the video will just been splitted into a uh, frames and that frames will act as an images so videos also been uh, uh, i mean uh, going to be create some uh, frames and that frames uh, you can see how a video can be uh, i mean re i mean generated new samples so we are not always going to take the input as a video the video will be divided into frames with the help of the frame matching you are going to uh, create the other frames okay so what is the common thing frames uh, frame places okay the pixel the pixel size and the all these things will be mapped and will be generated also so you for that you have to identify some uh, uh, before going into video generation they'll have to fix the fields also because gender uh, fields means for example um, a different uh, i mean a uh, different uh, uh, places you can go and check the videos i right? take the videos right for example if i take uh, if I, my video input is my view, a news reader okay somebody is reading the news and that is the vi uh, video and uh, which is the input if i want to resample it i if i want to create new uh, new samples would i want to cover all the frames not at all right only the person who is there because other things will be a static only the person who is reading the news will be have, will have some dynamic actions right so in that cases you don't want to take all the frames whereas when you just go and take some sports entertainment driving all these cases no uh, there will be a you know, fast movement slow movement all these things will happen so for that you have to identify the field so based on the field you can go and uh, do the uh, i mean the creation of generate the new samples okay so these when you go for the sports and the entertainment you need some more attention also the speed also you should calculate because the entertainment the movie speed and the sports video speed uh, um uh, speed will be different the movie will be in uh, some pace but the sports is not like that when you take football it will be like running 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 running, running. somehow but when you go for cricket the speed of the video will be something uh, i mean the action of the person in say the video will be less right so that uh, so what the next frame shall be different so when i take a uh, football the person if i take the analysis and split the frame in the first second and the second frame itself the person will be moved to the next side when coming to this uh, i mean the uh, some other uh, uh, sports activities that is not that that much speed they have not run it is not the running way they'll be stand in one place and they'll be uh, uh, i mean playing okay so carrom board all these things are there no so you have to identify the fields first so next coming to the speech generation speech generation is we know the input is going to be the speech audio signal and your output is going to be the text and not always that is a speech uh, that is a speech generation sometimes it can be a text and that can be given to the speech as well okay so it is uh, when even you say it is a speech recognition then that is speech to text when you sp say it is speech generation then we can say it is text to speech so uh, next is application so some of the applications are deep brain speech brain synthasia utilizes all these are the available uh, i mean platforms for handle the speech 
So now I'll just give some uh, deep insight in the automatic speech recognition. So automatic speech recognition, what is automatic speech recognition? Automatic speech recognition is like when you give some input and I'll get some output. So automatically it reads. If I'm going to talk in front of some, I'm going to design some ASR model. If I'm going to talk to that model that, auto, that will parallelly generate some text without, um, I mean, the model is already trained with some data but automatic what is automatic here I'm, if i speak on spot if i'm now if i'm uh, uh, i'm just clicking my okay record so it will just on the parallelly it will just create some text so this is automatic speech recognition system how then this this asr will be designed is with these two uh, two types they'll design okay one is speaker independent and the other one is speaker independent which is like in some places you want only one person will be talking right if i want to daily i'm just improving my uh, place okay i i'm just getting in, entering into my house or getting in, entering into my app for a best example i can go for this laptop okay so i want to open my laptop with a voice recognition password so the user is only one user so this system is going to open this uh, laptop with the help of only one user, which means it is speaker de independent. So only with the help of only one speaker information, I mean one speaker data, okay, one speaker's features alone, it will just get trained and some automatic speech recognition one works. If suppose it is not only only one word, if I check, um, they are going to be a public place, okay, the, in public places, if I want to book a ticket, and someone, <coughs> many people will come, uh, ticket, uh, book, uh, give a ticket from this place to this place automatically gives it is not user specific many user n number of users will come in that cases you have to design one model with a speaker independent also well. okay so this is the architecture of the asr so first i'll be giving this voice so this voice is being given the sounds analysis so you'll just all the uh, sound the phoneme sound all the sounds will be ju just recorded and now the acoustic models all the phone uh, acoustic models the, the phoneme conversions all those things it it is not that whatever you are talking i'm talking it as like rat ra the representation is different okay so those things <coughs> will be converted from the acoustic model and that will be given to their speech recognition decoder and the language model is separately is there so if this sound is there what is the next sound to be com combined and to the and it will be given to the text okay to the so the language model is a major part here so this will give what is the input so your input is why some sound analysis is done and that is given to the speech recognition the acoustic model will recognize will understand that what has been given from the sound analysis and it will create some acoustic noise and from the language model it will identify what type of word it is what is the next word all these things it will be spread it give it, it will be learned from the language model and finally that will be uh, and the text will be generated so this is how the architecture of asr works and next is the I, I told about the acoustic and language model so the representation of the sound that make a word so the sound it will these only the sound uh ta, pa, la, those things will be represented different in so that will be learned by the acoustic model so the disc the words itself the what are the words will sound similar what can be matched what can be matched in sequence all those things will be mapped with the help of language model so next coming to this uh asr how asr works so i have audio this audio uh, will, will also be uh, split it into frame the frames will handle the acoustic frame so from the frame to the state uh, the, here we, i'll be just dividing into some acoustic model all here so from 
extra the phoneme conversion which means that the sound the sound will be changed here the sound will be changed as a text and the text will be combined together and it will form a word and that form a word will be represented as a sentence and finally it will give some meaning so these uh, conversion of audio from print straight to phone will be a neoacoustic model and the and the word sentence meaning will come under the language model so this this is in these are the feature extraction so it is yeah feature extractions here so why it is decision tree here is the decision tree here is why yes i want to decide yes i want to decide the phoneme once it is just converted from sound to phoneme representation i want to know what can be the next possible sound as an output so i want to know the sound as also so for that i am just giving here so these are some with the help of decision tree so language model probably it will work with the help of nlp concepts right so next coming upon to the this steps we have in speech recognition first we'll just convert from analog to digital conversion with the help of and quantization all these uh, uh, sampling and quantization uh, techniques and you have to do some obviously all the data will have some pre processing step here what are the pre processing step previous i told no some long period of quiet and also we have some noise in back, uh, uh, in uh, in Uh, in audios also that also has to be handled and improved so the removal of uh, even it is here in this diagram is if i told the audios will be converted to the frames if suppose some frames are having a silence okay some uh, frames are having uh, only a silence so the removal of silent frames will also happen in the speech processing step only pre processing step only next is what are the features you will be extract and that will be converted to phoneme or syllable so these features will be extracted as a state from the state you will be just converting it to phoneme and syllable next after that a word selection so once it is the phonemes are combined and giving some word and based on the word you will just combine the sentence and you will get a, a meaningful sentence as a text as an output so automatic asr will work as a speech to text processing so inside okay inside this automatic speech processing we have a concept of code switching that also to be addressed which is very important in uh, for our uh, recent days which means so we are like uh, people are no, not knowing how to type how to study all those things they are not where they were not aware of it for those people if they want to book a ticket or to in charge they want to get something in from the vending machine or they want to get something with the help of without knowing uh, the educate uh, without the if the edu uneducated people want to do all these things they can speak right they will speak on their own which means we cannot fix it uh, when we speak it no they are, they are not going to speak uh, uh, um, i mean uh, a constant language right they'll have some mixture of languages which means if i take tamil they'll have they'll combine the tamil and uh, english if i take some telugu they'll use some telugu and english if i take hindi hindi and english they'll combine and speak in that case our speech recognition system should also handle i trained my asa system with uh, if i'm going to uh, provide some mission in uh, uh i mean in uh, in our north side then if i cannot say that only the people will speak only in hindi no some cases or everybody is using uh, some english words so that has also to be trained by your system for that purpose only we go for this code switching so your asr model will address the code switching if the person is going to switch from one language to another language that will also should, that also should be handled and the exact meaning of that code switch the place should also be recognized by the system and you have to get the exact output okay so how uh, there are different types of code switch code switching also so one is stack switching intra switch uh, word switching intra central intense sentential switching intra sentential switching all these switchings are here so tag switching is like when you are going to switch switch your language from one play you are switching your language is right from one language to other language if you are going to make that switch in at the end of the sentence that is tag switching that too if you are making to make a question mark <clears throat> 
next is intra word switching a word within a word itself somebody will make a switch so that is called intra word and if it is going to happen uh, in the end of the clause or in the end of the sentence without questioning then it is inter sentential switching and if it is going to happen within a clause or sentence not at the last then it is called uh, intra sentential switching so next is coming to the speech brain toolkit okay so speech i told them one of the applications in speech recognition which are the uh, which comes under the uh, part of ai also it is an open source toolkit only you can go and look into it there it has been uh, uh, in a few years back it came to handle a speech system so you can train this it is it is as though it is told it is said as toolkit it is all it is it use a model right you can uh, you can remodify you can fine tune that model with your own data set it is fine tuned with english right so you can also remodify with your own uh, uh, language and you can use it so this is the general structure of the speech brain so how you will give your data set is you can either go with your psp or json this entirely this well this uh, this process is going to work with the help of hyper parameters you are going to design the hyper parameters so with the help of the hyper parameters only you are going to train so how many data you want to handle and how many things you want to handle all those things you are going to just tell and you are going to make it okay so next based on these things this is a way training script this is a part of training script where you should uh, i mean uh, other, uh, i mean change uh, fine tune your module according to your system okay next coming to this <coughs> brain dot fit you will just uh, this is a model this particular training script will be just given to the brain dot fit model where all your data sets will be uh, i mean uh, will be uh, trained and it will be created as a new model and that will be fitted in as a brain dot fit which is the model which is the fine tuned model this a particular image describes about the model which is which is existing this is not a fine tuned model this is the original models uh, representation so next is uh, the just the structure of how they'll do as we always take the uh, i mean first is the um, pre processing this is an audio sample your ear you will do all the speech process pre processing time drop down frequency drop down speed speed change if you want to do noise symbol re vibration all these pre processing steps will happen next is what features you want to do whether you want to do attain mfcc features or the spectrogram features all those things then coming to this speech recognition either you want to use transformers encoder decoder part all these things you have you can discuss this will attain all these things and finally some beam search processing is being arrived for which combines this beam processing is like this will handle only the this is going to handle only the audio but you need the language model to get a better accuracy right you without language model also you will get the output but if you include the language model your in your accuracy and your predictions of your text is will be and higher and higher not a simple high, uh, a simple difference is will be a huge difference so you can always go for, with the language model uh, with the help of language model you can give the prediction so this is how the speech recognition works uh, automatic speech recognition which means then how the a prediction is made um, through with the help of ai and uh, next uh, and with the speech brain uh, platform so you want to prepare data and you want to talk, uh, so here we have tokenizer step so where you will make your data into tokens and you will map it with with the language model and these two uh, things will be combined and given to the uh, recognition and finally the model predicts the output so next is the final thing is your data augmentation your data augmentation is nothing but if i have a sample image for probab most probably this data augmentation It will be for the images. How it will generate new samples is they'll do some flipping of your image, cropping the image, rotating the image, color change, changing. With these features changes, they'll create some. So four images will be cropped. The four images will be rotated horizontally, vertically, top, bottom, all those things. With the help of this, they'll be just creating it. Why we go for this image? Here, when you do that, this our uh, overfitting will can also be uh, avoided. 
<clears throat> so here are some of the application synthesis of AI platforms and all those things. Uh, so th with this technique, you can just uh, uh, do uh, the art. In the, I just covered all the domain so that persons who are working in uh, text, speech, uh, and image processing and all those things can utilize it. So thank you. Any doubts? <clears throat>